Namaste everyone. My name is Pranavarma, and in this session, I'm going to talk about broadcasting. So, I will elaborately deal with the concept of broadcasting. Firstly, I want to deal it with within the ambits of intellectual property right. So, let's start with the broadcasting. Now, the broadcasting was an area less touched by Indian legislators due to lesser competition in existence of the national broadcaster at that time that was Prasar Bharti. But now situation was complete, no, but now situation is completely different. What happened was that cricket was becoming more popular and multinational broadcasting companies have started to buy broadcasting rights of cricket because of their enormous commercial value and that this resulted uh, this resulted being uh, uh, litigation sprouts galore with complaints referring to international regimes to substantiate their claims and it has become the responsibility of judiciary to fill this gap through various pronouncement and one of the major pronouncement was ministry of information and broadcasting versus cricket association of bengal that has uh, came in 1995. The Supreme Court directed the government to set up an independent autonomous authority which would free Prasar Bharti from the shackles of government control and ensure conditions in which the freedom of speech and expression could be meaningful and effectively enjoyed by one of by one and all. So the major aim of this session is to analyze the national and international broadcasting regime in the digital age and analyze whether there is any need for legal reform for regulating broadcasting services in India in the light of uh, international regimes. So neighboring rights are a distinct form of intellectual property right and it is used to indicate rights of performers and producers to be compensated when their performances recordings are performed publicly broadcasts and rented out or reproduced. The concept of neighboring rights as they called neighbors because they are they are associates of intellectual property rights. So the purpose of neighboring rights is to protect the interest of certain persons or legal entities that either contribute to create or uh, to making creative works available to the public or produce subject matter that is considered worthy of copyright like protection which is not original or creative enough to qualify as a work under the national copyright system so the beneficiaries of neighboring rights are usually producers of phonograms performers and broadcasters so in india broadcasting is one of the most important mechanisms for communicating information and knowledge to the public at large and nonetheless, the development of digital technology is leading to a technological convergence between the three pillars in the chain of communication, namely telecommunications, broadcasting and informatics. And uh, interactive development, uh, that is multimedia, holds enormous potential for increasing access and wider dis uh, dissemination of footage to, uh, to developing countries and uh, and of delivering informational and entertainment uh, uh, value quicker. So in India, therefore, needs to create an appropriate national regulatory framework to promote the production of works, as well as its transmission and diffusion to the benefit of the society. The part of this process involves re uh, revisiting and revising the existing frameworks for the protection and regulation of broadcasting organizations which play a fundamental role in transmitting information to the public. Now, today's state broadcasting service with a monopoly on broadcasting in the country and relying exclusively on public funding is no longer existent in developing countries. Neoliberal policies and obligations of international treaties have led to a new market for broadcasting. In addition to creating a new competitive environment, the market model of broadcasting aimed at offering more choice. So in an open market, it is considered that individuals can fully express 
their preferences and hence commercial broadcasters would be able to better meet their ends. Thus, viewers becomes consumer, a belief exemplified by the emergence of multinational broadcasting companies. Now, in recent years, with increased competition among multinational corporations for the transmission rights of footage, especially in cricket, organizers and authorities have become more aware of the value of their rights and commercial value. The development of technology allows computer users to see photos, enjoy real-time video, and listen to live audio of the events over the internet. Due to its capacity to deliver information to users almost instantaneously, the internet has become an increasingly popular way to reach news and information. Now, in the past, the value of broadcasting rights to sports events, especially, stayed relatively low. Organizers concerned themselves more with ensuring coverage to attract sponsorship and promote popularity of an event. However, the situation is completely reversed as major sports events are amongst the program that attract maximum viewers and there is a heavy competition to be the exclusive broadcaster of sports events in a given geographical area because broadcasters want to attract the advertising income that flows from large viewing audiences. The biggest example of it can be Indian Premier League. But the broadcasting of sports events achieved higher figures for viewers with a strong buying power, particularly with the, with the 15 to 50 year age group. This target audience is essential for advertisers because it is a readily identifiable group not easily reached by other programs. So as a result, the demand to advertise on sports event broadcasts has increased and has the competition for the television right to pro- broadcast those events. So the right to broadcast sports events is granted usually for a given territory per country on an exclusive basis. Broadcasters consider exclusivity necessary in order to guarantee the value of given sports program. The value consideration is in terms of the numbers of viewers and the amount of advertising dollars and even attracts. So the organizer initially owns the broadcasting rights to a given event. The organizers control access to the premises where the event occurs. It usually admits only one host broadcaster to produce the television signal. In this way, the uh, the organizer controls the broadcasting of the event guarantees exclusively. The host broadcaster then must secure broadcast rights from the event organizer to televise the event within its own national territory. The challenges of technology in broad public broadcasting. Now, as with all other media, the dramatic changes in telecommunication technology in the last quarter of the 20th, 20th century had substantial impact on the character and prospects for public broadcasting. The broadcasting had had been built as an analog system of production and transmission using open over the air spectral frequencies and serving generally as a mass medium. But beginning in the 1970s, the quickly spreading uses of and interactions among coaxial cable, optical fiber cable, satellite distribution and computerization inaugurated a series of challenges to the convention model and began to take broadcasting more explicitly, explicitly into the complex welter of telecommunications. But those challenges became more significant with the rapid increase in the pace of digital technology developments in the 80s and 90s, leading to a process of convergence and reconfiguration among media forms generally. So by the end of this century, the very structure and associated industries and services form of more traditional broadcasting were breaking down in the face of a much larger need to cater all the needs which were demanding from all of this digital transmission. The public broadcasting has been able to take creative advantage of the early phase of those changes. And so, so let me give an example. Now in its adoption of geostationary orbit satellite services for distributing its national signals, in keeping with its ownership and physical base in those stations, it had been more open to the flexibility of that technology that had commercial broadcasting initially, where centralized network controls militated such uh, distribution options. 
and it has also taken a leading role in the development of a closed captioning for used by use by hearing is impaired so by contrast contrast the commercial television responses of the broadcasting and cable industries to the newer cable newer program service opportunity seemed initially stronger and by the mid 1980s those industries were corporate cooperating to develop new services that to many eyes resembled news of traditional public broadcasting now in the light of this came roman convention rome convention of 1961 uh, brussels satellite convention of 1974 trips agreement of 1995 wipo performance and programs tt and wipo copyright treaty and it is since 1998 wipo has been addressing the topic of updating the protection of rights of broadcast broadcasting organizations to manage the problem of signal theft particularly in the digital environment so the wipo broadcasting treaty exclusive right uh, go and approach go with the right based approach that would create a new intellectual property rights such as rights in broadcast signals Uh, which would be layered upon existing copyright in the underlying program material that is content so normally broadcast organizers do not produce any work they just arrange transmission of works so the indian copyright regime is a legacy of its colonial past that we all know in 1885 the british colonial government passed a legislation granting broadcasters in effect a monopoly over communications and broadcastings that is indian telegraph act of 1885 the indian copyright act of 1914 and 1957 was primarily based on uk copyright act of 1911 and 1956 now with the development of new technologies and international legal framework it, it became essential to update copyright laws and it has happened how uh, with with the amendment of 1994 the act was substituted with the new sections providing the broadcast reproduction rights the copyright act of 1957 has been amended majorly 6 to 7 times that is 1983 and 2004 1992 1994 uh 1999 and 2012 so the update in the law helped in as follow at right? clarity on what is broadcast organization and uh, filling uh, philip to fight piracy to signals and additional layer of protection to the creative works being transmitted via broadcast the equality of treating uh, treatment overseas for indian broadcast signals which have until now been pirated without adequate safeguard for the international uh, for international commit to facilitate better investment in broadcast infrastructure now all of this led to various change so what has happened basically so the important landmarks for the broadcasting regulations in india uh, were various that i will discuss in the coming session but copyright act that has been amended in 1999 which also provided broadcast of broadcasting organizations with broadcast reproduction rights uh, which will give them essential rights of rebroadcasting causing the broadcast to be heard or seen by the public on payment of any charges making any sound recording or visual recording of the broadcast and selling or hiring to the public or offering for such sale or hire the same making any reproduction of such sound recording or visual recording where such initial recording was done without license or where it was licensed for any purpose not in use asked by such license or selling or hiring to the public or offering of for such sale or hire it is it is now within the premises of copyrights mainly to provide broadcasting organization and the producers basically a monopoly right for 25 years and obviously there are various issues with other laws also that we will see in coming sessions so in this session what i have dealt basically is the issues of broadcasting organization in the past and in the coming session obviously i will deal and how indian acts indian copyright act basically uh, came a solution with it came came up with a solution to cater the needs of change 
and in coming session i will talk about various other laws till then